lost all of his footholds And with a scowl in his pockets and a smile on his face He followed with obedience and fell in the nettles Fell in the nettles, fell in the nettles Alright Alright Ben, what are you doing? Just uh, giving this for some throat lozenges Some what? Some throat lozenges What the hell are you doing that for? That, you shouldn't really be doing that. Why not? You, should, you, you, shouldn't give, you shouldn't give them to animals. Why are you giving them that? You said it had a sore throat. I said what? You said it had a sore throat. I did not say it had a sore throat, Ben. I just said it's a little horse. It's just a little horse. Oh. Good day, everyone. Today we're going to be tasting Stinger, uh, another batch of beer. The difference uh, between Stinger and other badger beers is that it's brewed using nettles. And nettles are these things over here. The nettles that are used in the beer stinger are actually come from the garden of Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, who's a celebrity chef, shaggy hair, kind of a chicken messiah. He saves the chickens, chickens like him, but also he knows about nettles. Now, um, when we asked where he lived, he said, uh, we're told he lives in the countryside, we can't, we we're in the countryside and we've knocked on a few doors and he doesn't live here. So we're going to have to um, get our own nettles. Now I've never picked nettles before. Uh, my general attitude towards nettles, much like yours I imagine Tom, is stay away because they, uh, they stink. So what I'm going to do here, I know you're supposed to respect the countryside, but if they're going to sting you then I'm not going to show them any. It's, it's dog eat dog. So there's some nettles. The reason that they've used stinging nettles in this beer is because it dates back to age-old methods of brewing before they realised that hops were the way forward um, to give you your beer your flavours and your bitternesses. Um, they used some stinging nettles, so that's what we're going to go for. Apparently stinging nettles cured all sorts of things um, back in the day. They were believed to cure... Um, what did they cure? They cured rheumatism... Dysentery. Uh, dysentery. Pretty much, they, they thought they'd, they'd cure everything. Ants in your pants. Ants in your pants, yeah, itchy, itchy down there. Itchy Inch under crackers. There. Um, so yeah, and, and people would use them in stews. There's a quite, apparently quite a similar taste to, to spinach. Um, they put them in teas. So they've been, they've been used in all sorts of different things. We just think of them as these really annoying plants that sting you lots. But actually, there's a lot of good properties. As you can see, they grow quite like, like a weed almost, but they're from the same botanical family as the hops. So they do actually have a distinctive place in the countryside. Have you, do you think Ray Mears is worried about us too? <laughs> have you got that SAS book? <laughs> um, we've heard that people eat nettles for a dare, and apparently it's a bit of a big deal in the countryside. So now they're very rich in all the things that give you muscles. Yeah. And um, you could do with a bit of this. Yeah, probably could. It also, um, there's a, uh, an act called John Nettles. Yeah, he was in Bergerac. He was in Bergerac. So you ready to eat this? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put this right in my mouth because I'm that hard. Apparently, this is difficult. Bothered. Right, really quite nice actually. A little bit minty. There's some stuff on it. I prefer the rocket you get now. Waitrose. Right, yeah. Other supermarkets were available. Stinger. It's an organic ale. It pours a lovely golden colour. Now, on the on the nose there, you're certainly going to get a bit of that pininess that you might expect. As we were saying when we ate these stinging nettles, there is a little bit of freshness, a bit of mintiness to it. And you're getting that on the nose there, a bit of lemongrass, a bit of pine. It's, it reminds me of um, that time we skipped hand in hand through a pine forest, oh, Ben. Great day, isn't it? Lovely. It sparkles on the tongue a bit. Um, Hugh Furley Whittingstall, when he's tasting that, says there's a bit of tingle on the tongue. I imagine he's trying to, he's saying that because it's nettled. And there is a little bit, there is that effervescence there, there's a bit of a sparkle there that really makes it lively, makes it refreshing. But it's also very smooth, it's fresh, a real summer beer. Um, and I mean, if you think ales are too heavy, or you think you associate ales with dark beers and heavy beers, it's proof that, I mean, look at that. On a hot summer's day, much like today, this is 
absolutely splendid. It's marvellous. A good, a good thing about it as well is it will go with lots of different foods, but we would suggest you go with summery sorts of foods, things that are light, so maybe a nice salad, a Caesar, Caesar salad, chicken Caesar salad if you're um, a meat eater, or just a salad with no meat in it if you're a vegetarian. And maybe fishes, nice light fishes, maybe maybe the little bit of spice in it, that lemongrass might yeah. play nicely with a bit of Thai fish. Mushroom risotto. Mushroom risotto. All over oh, there, because yeah. you've got a slight bitterness that cut through the creaminess. It's fantastic. Or, if you're having a party, if you're having a barbecue, this is the perfect beer to serve. Just as people arrive, put this in their hand, make it sure it's chilled. Absolutely fantastic. The phone going off. That'll be, that'll be the city. Hello, Tom Sandon. Hi, yeah, how's it going? I can't, I can't really hear you. you. You're breaking up a bit. Sorry, it's, I'm out in the countryside at the moment. Can you... Can you hear me? And with a scowl in his pockets and a smile on his face He followed with a beating from fell in the nettles Fell in the nettles, fell in the nettles